Hello everyone, welcome to NPTEL course on Rural Water Resource Management. This is week 12, lecture 2. In this series of lectures in week 12, we are looking at the final data that is needed for putting a water budget for rural water resource management. Along this course, we looked at different water data that is needed, why it is needed. We looked at conservation techniques. And we also looked at important aspects of water management. Now we will look at why this is important in terms of water management and rural livelihood sustainability options. In the last lecture, we looked at the hydrometeorological data that included your um, uh, rainfall uh, and other aspects, groundwater levels, etc. In this uh, uh, week, we will be looking at the other aspects of the groundwater uh, and rural water hydrology. And the most important is your soil moisture driven by remote sensing data. Why is it driven by remote sensing data? The estimates that we will look at. So normally, you will have to have soil moisture measured at different depths. Okay? And we understood that in the soil uh, class, we understood that there is a uh, particular volume of water that needs to be present inside the pore spaces of the soil for plant to grow. Okay, So which means you have a depth of soil and the volume of the water changes. Okay, So it increases with depth if you go from 0 to uh, 100, or is it decreasing with depth if you go from 0 to 100 centimeters? All these are both are possible in a soil profile. So there is a need of putting meters at regular intervals and measuring soil moisture. However, it has become very um, expensive and it is um, not spatially uh, representing the whole area. And for that reason, there has been an uh, in, uh, introduction of using remote sensing for soil moisture, which is driving these um, uh, estimates for soil moisture. Basically, remote sensing is the process of collecting data from an object without touching it. So here we go. We're not going to go under the ground. However, the satellite or the remote sensing object can penetrate through the soil and estimate properties of the soil water column. It is driven by radar principle, but let's not get into the depth of the, how the data is collected. Right now, it has been used worldwide for assessing the soil moisture in the soil profile. Now, if we know the soil uh, moisture, the soil profile, we are at a very healthy stage to either irrigate or not irrigate, take decisions basically. And that is where this WRIS soil moisture data housed in the WRIS website can help. There are multiple other ways that you could get this data, satellite driven data, um, observation data, etc. However, there is no one single database that stores all the data. And for that reason, we are keeping this as an option for water management. Okay, so where we can go to this database and take. So I'm only going through the uh, database within the WRIS website. But as I said, there are multiple other resources that can give the same data or even better resolution, temporal, etc. Okay. Right now, the one we have is pretty good enough. Um, and uh, from there, we can take a lot of understanding. We'll go through the uh, data profile uh, right now. Okay, so it is led by the NRSE uh, through the ISRO. So ISRO has uh, multiple application centers for satellite remote sensing application, the SAC, NRSE, RRSE. 
where NRSE stands for National Remote Sensing Center. SRC is AC stands for uh, Space Application Center and RRSE stands for Regional Remote Sensing Center. So these are centers within ISRO where they take remote sensing data, they apply it to the ground and get estimates of properties, parameters, etc. There has to be some validation which they should have done in the modeling stage or data acquisition stage. So the NRSE has used a variable infiltration capacity model, BIC in short. So what it does is it takes satellite data, it's like a model, like a box you can assume, it takes the satellite data, different hyperspectral images and also the data from radar and then estimates the soil moisture property and gives it as an output. This is how the uh, soil moisture profile uh, looks like in the um, uh, WRIS website. So we will uh, get through it and see how uh, this website is uh, done. Uh, sometimes there is some changes, so you won't see the entire website similarly. For example, last uh, days I was trying to get this website, but um, there were some issues. Uh, luckily it is working now, so I will be happy to show it live in class. Uh, so that you can also uh, estimate these properties uh, at a district level uh, and also sometimes block level. Okay, what you can see here is at every um, district, you have some soil moisture values and soil moisture can be from anywhere from zero to 100%, which is the pore space. The pore space that we discussed in the soil <coughs> can be filled with air or water. If it is 100% uh, water, then it is saturation. If it is 0% water, then it is unsaturated, totally unsaturated. It is, if it is in between, we have still call it unsaturated, depending on the percentage. So there are some percentages that the plant likes, depending on the soil. For example, if it is 100% water, then the plant will suffocate. It does, it cannot breathe. You are put so much water, same like us. We like water to drink. But if we are put in a swimming pool, we can survive for some time, but then after that, we need to come out. So similar things are there. If it's too much water, it cannot breathe. The plant cannot breathe and it will, the roots will decay and suffocate. So it is necessary to understand if you have to drain the soil or water the soil. And this data set helps you in managing that. Now, if you have this information, you can plan ahead on uh, your irrigation schedule or if you need to buy groundwater as in pump water out and then put it, or how much water is needed for your crops, because you have the current soil moisture and you have to increase it by a percentage for your plant to grow. Okay, so with this, let me open the um, web page so that we could look at it. It is the WRIS website. And as I said, it, it is uh, somewhat a little slow uh, today. But let's hope it works um, for um, get the data. So how I went here is I went to home, then water data, and under the water data you go to hydrometeorological. We already saw rainfall. We will see evapotranspiration in the next class, and then we came to soil moisture. Okay. When you click soil moisture, this page will come up. Normally, the India map, as I showed in my presentation, should have the data already there. Okay, for some reason the data is like, for example, it's black in color, but uh, trust me, it is not, uh, it's still populating. You can see slowly it's populating. And here you could see the values, soil moisture values going up and down, correct? And you could see that this is for all the states uh, in, in uh, together. So the x axis <coughs> is your soil um, uh, sample location, which is your states. Okay, uh, whereas your y axis has a soil moisture. So you have soil moisture and then the states. And then the average of that is taken as a volumetric soil moisture, which is 25.56%. If you ask as a hydrologist, is it high? No, it is not. Uh, because right now we are in the March period. Look at the date, it's 2022 329 uh, up to 2022 0330. So just uh, one week before. Uh, this class recording, this data has come. So the data comes and then they do these models. 
So the satellite data is taken in and other parameters are taken in. They run these models, then they populate it on the website. So technically a week um, they take for this. And that is where it's kind of, we can say near real time, because if you know the soil moisture week uh, before, then you could uh, definitely do some uh, irrigation planning to save the water. So you could see here the legend is a high uh, soil moisture percentage, higher than 45 as blue, as the color suggests, and because our blue is water and you have higher water in, in high pore spaces. And then you have the red color to show it is alarming, it is dangerous uh, kind of soil moisture uh, in the low uh, phases, okay? So here we have um, on the right hand side, you can see that it is done for India. The whole, the data you see here, this average volumetric uh, soil moisture, and it is taken as a daily vo volumetric soil moisture content till 15 centimeters depth. So it doesn't go beyond 15 centimeters. Why is the magic number 15? Is because that is where most of the agricultural plants have root depth. If you have, this is the 15 centimeters root depth, and then some root go down, then you need better estimates. But if your uh, plant is only taking water from 15 centimeters, then this data is enough. Okay, so the water should be anywhere uh, drained and also soil moisture held in the soil um, within this 15 centimeters. Okay, so when you apply water, water moves down the soil profile in the 15 centimeters, it gets relocated and then the plants can take it up. If it is a well drained soil like gravelly soil, uh, then water will just flush through. And so soil moisture is not going to be kept, right? We saw these concepts in soil retention specifically in that paper. So coming back uh, for this date, you could see that the soil moisture is around 25.56 uh, for the entire country. And just here within this range, I could see that uh, Kerala has high uh, soil moisture content, 45.49%. And, and because it is on the Western Ghat region, uh, Kerala is blessed with a good soil uh, soil moisture and soil formation uh, properties also. A lot of uh, organic matter, a lot of um, you know degrading weathering of soil is happening, and those would have uh, fresh soil with a lot of water holding capacity. Okay, so let me uh, see if there are other states in the region. So I'm just going to pull down. There is no other states given, but you could see it here coming down. So this is the daily volumetric uh, content, uh, soil moisture uh, as a number, uh, the percentage 25.56, 25.45 average is that. So this is for the entire India of the two days it is taken and average is taken. Then you have the other states. When you see zero, doesn't mean that there is zero soil moisture. Maybe there's no data because Andaman and Nicobar might have some data, but it's not driven. So please understand that these are satellite driven products. So sometimes the satellite, um, the resolution is small, as in it doesn't it doesn't take the entire uh, pixel. So at the end of the day, you won't have data for Andaman. So Andaman areas um, um, uh, and Lakshadweep areas, you might have to go and put physical sensors. Okay, let me try here Lakshadweep, and you can see Lakshadweep is also zero as we thought because. And the, so the satellite data is too big to capture the uh, Andaman. It has to be small so that you can capture the data. Otherwise, uh, you can't. It's like um, uh, searching for uh, you know sand uh, particles using your uh, just plain eye. Okay, you cannot do it. You have to zoom in, and for that zooming in, like a microscope, you need a better, higher resolution satellite. Okay. So, but for the entire India, it is still good. You can see that the entire India is mapped. Um, I'm going to zoom out so that we could see it clearly. And you could see that, as I said, here along the Western Ghat region, this part along the Konkan region, there is good soil moisture. Central India has some good soil moisture and always the Northeast has good soil moisture because of the high altitude rainfall situations. Whereas the um, uh, western regions have really um, drastic uh, rainfall patterns and right now the summer is kicking in and um, a lot of groundwater is used because of that. So if you look at it, soil moisture has good correlations with your groundwater because 
if your soil moisture goes down, you can use ground water to put water into the system. Okay, so we're going to look at the, I'm just going to remove the axis for now, and then let's take one uh, step ahead on looking at uh, what does it mean? Okay, so you have the India data, you have the state-wise data, and then the average data as a, a point data, and you can download. Okay, you can also have all the states here. So I'm just going to click it off. You can download all the states data for that particular average. So this is the average data for that particular dates, the two dates we have. Okay, and you can also um, download these uh, metrics as per uh, state-wise metrics. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on the left side what we have. On the left side, we have a um, unit wise uh, uh, section. Okay, so which means uh, do you want it as a basin or a state? As I, again, this, the basin can be your uh, water basin, big river basins, uh, including the Ganges, uh, the Indus, uh, the uh, Kaveri Basin, etc. Uh, but since all these administrations are done using state boundaries, we will keep it as a state boundary. And then, as I said, there is one model that drives the satellite data, and that is the NRSC uh, BIC model. So NRSC is the data provider, the, the person who's doing sampling uh, and all those things, whereas your um, BIC is the model. So you put NRSC because it is driving the BIC model. Then I'm going to select a state. Uh, let's do Maharashtra. There's a reason we do Maharashtra because there is a lot of sugarcane which grows here and sugarcane is more uh, than a year crop. Okay, so it needs water throughout. So when you see a soil moisture going down, then uh, it is alarming that you have to go back and water the crop. So that is what we have this, uh, you know, um, um, Maharashtra state selected. Okay, so Maharashtra state is selected. You can see that it's now showing up. Uh, and then I'm coming down to the district. Sometimes you do get the district, but sometimes you don't, but let's take till go on. Okay, slowly, slowly, you will see these uh, names populate. So India, Maharashtra, Jalgaon, uh, or also Pune, we can take, let's say take Pune because it has a lot of dams. So which means like if the soil moisture is low, then the person sitting on the dams can release the water. So we have Pune. Uh, and then we have daily time step. Yes, monthly doesn't make sense. Yearly is also not that helpful. For farmers, for people to manage water and release water, we need daily. So just because of the um, time it takes for the data to come in, I'm just going to do a couple of uh, days in last week of March. Let's see until when we do have data. So let's take from 20 until April, there's no data. So let's take the last data in March, which is 30th. As I said, still one week data is okay and let it uh, populate. You can see that as we even click it, it's populating here, but just the analysis is running behind to do some uh, measurement. Uh, it's 10 days of data, daily volumetric soil moisture content till 15 centimeters, you could see, right? Uh, and then the average volumetric soil moisture is 23.16%, which is very less. Uh, we need more water for the crops. You could see that right next to that is Thane and Mumbai region, which has higher soil moisture. That is because of also the uh, climatic factors uh, around that area. Uh, but most importantly, Pune has a lot of agricultural activities compared to Thane and Mumbai. So uh, there's a lot of water demand for the crops. So you could see here now it has populated 23.16. And I'm coming down to show the daily changes in the values. And you could see there is a, a, a steady decline of the soil moisture. And that is uh, correct because of the summer is peaking also. So March and slowly the summer is coming out. Uh, and then uh, you would see the temperatures rising uh, suddenly uh, uh, in the daytime, which is which drives evaporation, transpiration, and then the soil moisture is lost. <clears throat> and then let's come down. You could see the date wise, what is the value so that you can download and make the Excel sheet. So there's 11 entries, including the dates. So it's 11 days we have modeled. 
uh, and then we could see how the uh, you know soil moisture has changed you can download this as a uh, chart print chart download as image csv csv will give you the data in excel format also you can download and then use it here there is no station okay so in like the other uh, data that we used we don't have a station name we have a district so we can say for district uh, we have this data and if you look at pune here there is no um, uh, you know finer resolution in pune okay so you can only have it until pune there's no blocks in pune that has the data so you have to be careful saying that i can i do the village level analysis using this no you cannot so within pune if one part of pune has a lot of agricultural activity and then there's a pune city uh, so are you going to say that the water consumption is the same on both sides no it's not so uh, this is kind of an average this is sometimes a limitation of using remote sensing data um, but it is the best data we have for now okay and a lot of advisories uh, on on water management are being given using this data so it does work but as i said it does um, we have to take it cautiously because of the spatial resolution but uh, temporally it's one of the best every day you get data okay so every day the satellites are taking images it runs these models <coughs> which are based on temperature rainfall and other attributes and then you get the output as a net soil moisture okay so just while we're here i'm just going to try if we could get a higher uh, resolution uh, you know date resolution on this model uh, i'm just going to go from 1 to 10 13 of march okay so because i know for sure in the march period the um, temperature has picked up uh, quite drastically and we see that now the uh, soil moisture also picks up uh, slightly and then just keeps on going down uh, because of the temperature rising temperature and if you do february you can clearly see that february is cooler uh, and you have more soil moisture and then it starts to come down okay so <clears throat> soil moisture is a very important property for uh, crop management uh, just going to do that once so that you can check Jan one for sure was a very uh, cold and uh, you know, uh, cold weather was there. You can see beautifully how from the soil moisture 35, it has come down to 23. We have lost more than 12% soil moisture. And this is not purely because of the crops. It is the changing climate also. And if you go to the rainfall season, you will see uh, around 100% or 80% uh, soil moisture because the rainfall was giving the water. Let me show you that. So for example, we had a good rainfall in August. Let me click just August to show you um, the data. So again, click. So from August, now this is seasonal. You could see how it goes up and down. Uh, and that up and down is because of the um, rainfall coming and also because of the crops because in the curry season the curry is the rainfall season there is a uh, uh, plant sowing and then harvesting going on new crops putting being put and that is where you see this up and down motion uh, soil moisture is taken up and then rainfall happens it recharges soil moisture taken up rainfall happens recharge and there's a sudden dip and this dip is because of the plants plants the karif plants just take the water and then it just keeps on depleting once it depletes, you can also see it rises suddenly because of some rainfall, one or two rainfall events or irrigation, those kind of things, and then it keeps on declining. So if you progress in March, April, May, you'll see it's still going down to very, very uh, dry conditions. Okay, uh, And this is how you could uh, get some data for your location um, and also uh, get an average. See, the average doesn't make sense here because for the overall period, how do you prepare for it? You have 62, which is almost double the average, and then you have 23, which is very low compared to the average. So average doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does uh, help you to understand the range of which the soil moisture can go up and down. I hope this uh, class you could uh, download these data for your uh, village level analysis, water 
for soil and other aspects. This is not only for agriculture uh, because it also supports the recharge process for groundwater, drinking water, etc. With this, I would like to conclude today's lecture on soil moisture data connection. Thank you.